This video is a wee bit different because this is the 100th video on the channel and first of all I'd just like to say thank you very much to everybody that subscribed, everybody that watches, everybody that comments, it's really appreciated. It lets me know that what I'm doing is worthwhile and it's helping some of you out there as well. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for that. I'm really enjoying doing these videos, I try and get them out as frequently as I possibly can. Right now, it's slightly sporadic due to the current times we have in the world, but I'm really enjoying doing them and I'm trying to bring out two videos per week, whether that's like one kind of full length video at 19, 20 minutes, or whether that's one of the bite sized videos, the new ones that I'm doing. And when it comes to the bite sized videos, again, if you've got any ideas of anything you'd like to see with any of the softwares, just put a comment below. But I just want to stress, thank you very much, it's really appreciated. This video, I was recently contacted by Larry Grace, a very nice guy from America who's also the president of the International Society of Aviation Photography and he had a couple of questions regarding luminar and in particular the object side of luminar. So I spoke to him briefly via email and message and that and then I thought this would be a great thing to do because aviation photography is not one of my uh, 40s at all. I stay very close to an airport but it's not one of my 40s at all but editing side of it I thought I'd really love a go at this. So Larry very kindly allowed me to use three of his photographs. He sent me through more of them, but he very kindly allowed, allowed me to use them. So I created a composite using them. And it's a panoramic composite. And with that, I wanted to answer his questions. So hopefully I have within this video. So what you're going to see is you're going to see me creating the composite in Photoshop this time and then taking it into Luminar and finishing it off and hopefully answering Larry's questions for him. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so you've seen how the image came together. I'm now going to take it further in Luminar and get to the final edit and just show a couple of tips and tricks of how I would finalise this image. Because we're basing everything on this glow here that you know was across the front of the plane as well, although it's very subtle and it's all based in subtlety. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to get into AI Augmented Sky. And I'm going to go for object selection. Well, I have a couple ready for this. So I am going to choose straight away moon here. So you'll see that moon will drop in. And you see it's quite sharp moon and it'll be in the distance. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the object. And we're going to take the moon right down in size. And we're not going to leave it there. We're going to put it up here. Right, but before I do anything else with it, because you can see what I'm doing, I'm creating a flow with the image towards the light. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a visual flow here. And although there is clouds here and there's another cloud band here and there'll be another cloud band here, you probably wouldn't see the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the visibility of the moon right back. And I'm going to leave it at this size. As I say, it's just a tutorial on how to do it. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm then going to get into the advanced settings and I am going to push the mask slightly. I'm going to also defocus it ever so slightly as well. Not too much, probably just about one. That looks okay for that. Then I'm going to get into edit mask and I'm going to use a gradient mask. And for this, I'm just going to bring the moon in and no more, just to around there. That's me, it's quite subtle and quite happy with that. So I'm going to turn that mask off. Next thing, I want to add another object here. So what I am going to do for this, I'm working on a Mac at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the layers. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So that's me get a copy. With that copy, I can go in and I can take out the moon if I want or change it or whatever, but I don't want. What I want to do is seal these together in one layer. So if you're on a Mac, what you can do 
is here, you can go back into the layers and the three dots here, you can rasterize. If you're on a PC, if you go into the layers, create a new stamped layer and that will bring all the layers together and create a new layer on top of that. So, because I'm on a Mac, I now have this rasterized copy of the layer below. So what I can do again is I can go back in here and it's allowing me to add another object into the sky uh, with the AI augmented sky. So you can keep doing that, you can keep rasterizing, add object, rasterize it or stamp the layer and keep going and keep going and add as many as you can or as many as you want. Throwing everything at it sometimes just doesn't work but you might as well have fun doing it while you're doing it. So again I have another image ready. And this image here is another one of Larry's photographs. So we've got these three planes now, as you see the big one in the background. We've got these three now. Uh, each one of these photographs here of the aeroplanes themselves are from Larry. Larry sent them over to me. So that was really appreciate that because it allowed me to do something different for me for a change as well. So first thing, place object. Let's scale this right down in size. So I'm going to take it to around about there and I'm going to place it just so that it covers it's breaking the moon and no more and again I'm using visual flow towards the light to bring all this in so I'll turn off place object and then I'm going to fade this slightly not too much because I don't want if I take it back too much the moon starts to show through I'm just going to take it back slightly and what that does by doing that and it's the same for Photoshop. If you're trying to make something match a background, whether it's tonally, drop the opacity of it slightly and that will allow the colours to come through very, very slightly. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm quite happy with that. So that's me. I now have the composition. Final stages of this is just to tie it all together. So, first thing. New adjustment layer. And in this new adjustment layer, I'm going to go back in to the AI Augmented Sky, but this time I'm going to add sun rays. I'm going to emphasise this area here. So I'm going to pull that up to around there, so you can see that there. We know that the sun is over here. You can tell that by the direction of the clouds and also the light on the planes. And for this one, I, when I was creating this, I actually asked Larry for aeroplanes with the same direction of light. So that's why this one ties together a lot better. Then I am going to place the sun center. And for this, as you can guess, I'm going to take it down there. Right, these beams are too warm for me for this. So I'm going to take the sun warmth down and the sun rays warmth down. I'm not going to take them to white because you can see we've got color up here. So I'm going to take them back just to around there. But what I want them to do is I want them to kick across here and you'll see this change in a second. So I'm going to boost the penetration of this just so that I can see them better and I'm also going to boost the length of them as well. Right, so you see that affecting the entire image. This I will adjust in a minute. I'm going to edit a mask and as I say I only want them to be localised. I only want them down here. I don't want them going up here because the clouds show me that. So I'm going to use a radial mask and I'm going to draw a radial mask there. I'm going to take it down in size up to around about there. I'm going to increase the length of it, take the size up a bit and I'm going to move it over to here. So this is where all the sun rays have been taken away. So you can see that they're there and then they fade in and then they're gone here. So what I need to do is invert it. And straight away that gives me a light kick right across. So what I can do now is I can grab this area here and push that like that and take that across there. Bring that down. So this is now we're just tweaking it to decide where on the plane do we want it to be able to wrap or do we not want it to wrap? Do we want to take it more along the base of it? And for this... I'm actually going to take that down in size slightly, just to about there, and then I'm going to extend this. So I can see now I have light over here. And if I click the mask, you can see where the light is actually affecting. 
further, I'm seeing the white, the sun rays are actually affecting. So I'm going to move it down slightly, not too much. Quite happy with that. So turn off edit mask. I'm going to double this up. So again, I'm going to go back in, new adjustment layer, back in here, push that to about there, and then you see it now, take it further, place sun centre, take it down, take it off screen, even further off screen in this case, and again I'm going to go through the same process. So I'm going to turn the warmth down slightly, sun warmth down slightly. I am going to ch adjust the overall look for this. Darkens it down too much. Maybe I'm not. I'm going to leave, just increase the length slightly, go back into edit mask. And I'm going to go for a gradient radial mask again. Draw it in and repeat the entire same process. So straight away what I can do is I can click there, invert, I can take that down in size, I can take that across there, I can drag that out, take that down to about there. So what we're doing is we're intensifying the light that's coming across this. And I know it's quite strong at the moment, but I've got the opportunity to go in and actually pull back the opacity within the layer. So I'm actually going to randomise these just to see what happens. If I've given myself enough leeway, ah, there. That one, quite happy with that one. And then I'm going to go back into my layers, turn off edit mask, go back into my layers, and I'm going to pull the opacity of this back slightly. So if I take that right off, you can see the difference. So I'm going to put it in again, everything subtle. I'm just waiting for this to change just to about there. So that again, I'm quite happy with. Nearing the end of this one, go back in, new layer, new adjustment layer. So this time I'm going to go straight into the creative tab. I'm going to get into the LUTs. Ran through this once just to save you watching and the LUT I like the best for this was tritone. I just felt it, it gave some drama and impact to it. Smoky is nice as well, but I stuck with tritone. So I'm going to leave that there. After this, new layer again. And this time I'm going to get back into the essentials panel and I'm just going to enhance everything slightly. So I'm going to enhance that so you can see some detail coming out here. Sky Enhancer, if I do it, I don't like the effect. So I'm going to pull it back. Structure, very, very subtly. There, I'm quite happy with that. That's fine. Colour, I'm going to go in and pull the saturation back again slightly. And the vibrance back slightly. I'm going to go in and just check the blues for this. So if I pull the saturation back in the blues, we get a... For me and my taste, I get a better image from that. I did like it really vibrant though, but for what I'm aiming for with this, the luminance I'll take back slightly again. So that again, quite happy with. Last but not least, I don't know if you noticed when I made the compass in Photoshop, there is a slight vignette here. And I put that in, in the compass. I actually created two roads, although you don't see it in the layers. I created the two roads, two runways. And in the second one, I added a vignette and I adjusted it and I pulled it back. So is that I knew when it came to the end, I was going to vignette this just to draw your eyes in even further within Luminar. So I'm going to go in for a vignette. I'm going to pull this back. And this is when it starts to get a little sketchy from the point of view you don't want to lose anything. If I put a strong vignette in that, I clamp the light here. Perhaps you want that, but I know I can erase it as well, but perhaps you want that. But what it also does is it affects too much up here. Again, I could go in and edit the mask and I could paint out that subtly, but I'm unsure whether I want the light in this area here clamped too much. So I'll take that back, I'll ease it back. 
just to about there and I'm, I'm just checking it I'm just checking around the edges that I haven't drawn the eyes in too much I like the fact it's slightly darker there but at the same time I'm going to edit it and I'm going to choose a brush for this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase but I'm going to erase with an opacity of around 25 it's going to make it quite big and it's just going to subtly change this here I don't know if you saw that there I'll just show you so you can see where I've just subtly painted that out take a tiny bit out down here I like the contrast here so perhaps I'll take it up here as well and I'll leave it at that so there you have it that's just a quick edit to create the atmosphere, to add new objects into the sky and to add multiple objects. I could go on and on and add lightning in down here, but that'd just be too much. So that's just a, a quick way of adding objects into the sky. You either, uh, if you're on a Mac, you can rasterize the layer or uh, if you're on a PC, you can go in and create a new stamped layer, it just depends how you work. So I'm quite happy with that, I'm quite happy with the final results of that. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully the merger of Photoshop and Luminar lets you see how everything came together. And for you Larry, hopefully you liked the final result and I answered your questions for you. I really enjoyed doing that one actually because that was something out of my comfort zone to a point because of the subject matter. So I really enjoyed doing that. So thank you very much again for allowing me to use your images for this. As this, as I've already said, is the 100th video on the channel and I did mention in the last video there that there would be some freebies so please help yourself to them, they include back, backgrounds and objects and whatever else I can come up with in the time that you can use in Luminar Photoshop or whatever so that's just my kind of way of saying thank you for subscribing to the channel and for watching the channel and obviously for commenting as well so that, that, that honestly is it's really appreciated I'm not going to say there's lots in it compared to the freebies that I gave away before because I think it was 55 or 50 or 55 overlays there there's some overlays in this as well there's not as many this time uh, but Hopefully you'll find them useful and hopefully you'll have fun with them. There's different things there. I'm a Star Wars fan so there's a couple of Star Wars things in there as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully what I did with the images that Larry gave me gave you some inspiration to try things for yourself and perhaps let you see how to edit things another way because we all edit differently. And in each video I try to show a different way of doing things, although the, the end result, but there's different ways of getting to that end result. And that's the main thing about software. We don't all have one single workflow. There is easier ways to do things. There is more difficult ways to do things. But what you do from that is you choose what ones you want to use. And that's the best way for you to move forward and progress. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to check out more videos please check them out in the channel below. If you're currently not a subscriber and would like to consider subscribing that would be greatly appreciated because it helps me produce more content for the channel. Remember, stay safe, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.